Vebo, see something funny ongoing on my people. Na Enugu governor, PDP governorship candidate. Not be smart in the guy do. Enugu governorship PDP candidate. A con erect board. You see the boards now. Couple to obedience there. He said because the fear of obedience, eh? eh? <laughs> At the beginning of wisdom. He oh. can't the beg obedience. He read boy board. Say where well, say obedience. So me on another verse. So we did together. Oh, eh? PDP obedience. Me they call vote for. I don't know the, the people in the follow and strategize do this thing. So they really strategize where. Well. You know, couple obedient there, say where well, say, make obedient, make all of them vote, say where well, say, and uh, may they not use verse vote to, you know, understand, say, may they vote where, well, you know, say, he ready to do things. You need to see Nigerian reactions. I mean, all our brothers and sisters from Enugu, all the obedience, not be small reactions, so not be small, you know. Let's get all the details. Enugu PDP governorship candidate, erect B board, begs obedient to vote for him. As the March 11 governorship election draws near, the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Peter Maba, has asked obedience in Enugu State to vote for him. B boards at strategic locations in the state were specifically made to urge obedience to vote for him as the most qualified candidate in the state. The B board says, hashtag obedience for Maba. Enugu, and you can see the PDP logo there. In fact, people don't they comment, not be small comment. So, one say, hmm, voting for him is bringing back the days that we want to bury. And that one say, the same member directed his members to vote for Atiko instead of our brother Peter Obi. We're not voting for you. And that one said, no to God for that reason. We don't want PDP and APC anymore. And that one say, please. People of Enugu vote for Ramo. And I one say, no, our director don't direct us. Vote Labour Party top to bottom. We know they vote for anybody. And I one say, the fear of obedience is the beginning of good governance. This is a good sign. And that person say, Oga, if you want to know the truth, eh, promise us, say you go do good things. We don't want shamble. Government, when you go come, tell us one thing, do another thing. And I one say, this is madness. Stand in what you believe. Tell the people as it is and wait for them and see if they will support you. And now, so not be this man, this same man, what make we vote for him? Will they wait for you? And the, and the, the discussions continue. Everybody has their opinion, you know, of the very sad person, what he has done, what he intends to do, and how things are going. And right now, you know, the fear of the obedience is the beginning of good governance. You know, in case you're not aware, Peter will be, you know, many people have said to him, you will have to begin, you will now have to begin, uh, you know, uh, coaching uh, regime because we don't want, you don't, we don't want you to soil this obedience movement. The obedience movement is not Peter will be, it's an idea. It is a ray of hope that people have seen and they can tap into. Not because of Peter Obi. That's what I'm trying. That's the point I'm trying to make. Not because of Peter Obi, but because people want good governance. They want something new. They want something fresh. They want something different from the norm, from what has been, what has kept the people in such a bad state and bad place up until now. They want something else. They are tired of the status quo. They want, what can we do to change the course of what is going on? That's what is on people's mind. And they are saying, you know what? Enough. Enough of the lies. You come to tell us A and you actually mean B. You are telling us C and you are doing D. We don't want it. We want people who are honest, who are sincere, who are down to earth, who says is this is what we have left. This is how we're going to manage it. And so be it. Not telling you what is not there or telling you less than what is there. You know, so these are some of the things that have, these are some of the factors that have felt obedience. And so many people are saying it's about time we begin to navigate on the path of truth and ensure that we do not continue with the same thing. So the obedience movement has begun to, you know, make some politicians, you know, make quick adjustments and begin to re-examine re their, their, their stand. You know what they believe and what they what morals they are going to be displaying before the people, because whether you like it or not, the obedience are all coming out. By the way, Peter Obi did not bribe anybody. Go and investigate. If I'm lying, come back and say she's lying. 
Yes, I'm, that I'm aware of. It did not break. People just naturally, it was not him. It was the idea that there could be a governance, a government where the people can have a voice. A system where his blind spots can be seen and, you know, can be can be related back to him and he can go back and re-examine the whole thing, you know, and see what he can bring to the table. If there is need for an apology, if there is need for redirect, re redirecting some of these aspects and bringing those people to a place of confidence where they are proud of their nation, where they can move forward, then we begin to, we begin to make real progress. Other than that, we are having a real laugh, a real joke. And the joke is on us because we decided to live a lie. So if we want to be honest and sincere, if we want truth to become the order of the day, every single person must begin to apply and the necessary, all the necessary tools that moves us from where we are now to where we ought to be. The days upon us have become so important and so nobody should undermine the fact that Nigerians, we are moving ahead and we must, okay, do everything humanly speaking possible to bring Nigeria out of the present predicament and bring us to where we ought to be. You know, Nigerians, are, you know, people have suffered a lot. People have suffered a lot, if you ask me. You know, people have suffered a lot. Imagine person, good boy, board, they say, well, say, now obedience. Excuse me, obedient what? Eh? Obedient what? You know, so it shows you that it is, a, it, is, it is a serious matter. If anybody really wants to, if you say you want to have a good governance, then you can relate with the people. You know, so Peter will be, we need to start what we call a mentorship program. Because we don't want a case where those senators, House of Rep members that have been, you know, nominated and gotten into one offices, we get there and become comfortable and begin to destroy the idea of the whole obedient thing. The, the, issue, the, the matter there, why obedience became prominent and why obedience movement became a movement beyond a man called Peter Obi or Dante Baba Hamed was because it was, it was squared on the position of truth. It was squared on the position that we will, we will stand by you, we will, we will say what is honest, what is truthful, we will not be deceitful, we will govern you thoroughly with integrity and honor. You know, that was, that was the basis on which obedience started. Now, if you're saying you, you, you want to continue with the obedience movement, then you must be able to tell us, <laughs> you must be able to lead in the, with the obedience, there, was, there must be an obedience mandate. In fact, people, Peter Abish should train people on the obedience mandate so that nobody comes and soy the name of obedience. So that that dream, obedience is a dream, is a, is a, is a, is a vision, becomes a reality. And nobody, nobody destroys it. So much so that when it's time, we can use it. Bye for now.